I'll begin the video by showing you uh, means to alter the pH and how these means or ways to alter the pH are related to the four um, conditions in the worksheet. pH can decrease if the acid concentration is increased. The pH can increase if the acid concentration decreases. The second one may not be as obvious as the first one. In the second one, think of it as, as the acid decreases, it's allowing whatever base is in solution to stick out like a sore thumb. The third one, decreasing the pH, can also occur by decreasing the base concentration. In this case, whatever acid is around is going to stick out like a sore thumb because the base concentration is decreasing. And the fourth one, increasing pH, can be caused by an increase in base. The first condition we'll look at is respiratory acidosis. The system that is in the title of the abnormality, in this case, the respiratory system, is causing the, the problem, in this case, in acidic environment. CO2 is behaving as an acid because we can see when CO2 is combined with water, it generates hydrogen cations. So let's take a look at what we need to do here. This first part, these three bullets, are a summary of the condition or the abnormality. The pH is too low, so all we need to do here is circle too low. The next is a summary on the system states. The respiratory system is abnormal. Now we need to include a word here, high or low. Is the CO2 too high or is it too low? Well, think about what I showed you earlier and how those alterations of pH can occur by changing the acid or base concentration. So we're talking about the acid, CO2, causing an acidic condition. It would seem reasonable then that the CO2 is too high. So all you need to do here is write high. The metabolic system is normal. So we're not going to write anything in this column. We're going to go over here and just put an X and say the metabolic system is normal. Now the system that is normal will compensate. So once you've concluded uh, which system is abnormal, you can eliminate that system from this table. So in this case, if the respiratory system is abnormal, we don't need to consider the uh, respiratory system as compensating. So the metabolic system, which is normal in this circumstance, is going to compensate. Now it controls the bicarbonate, the base. So what would seem reasonable? To increase the base, to offset the excess acid, or to decrease the base? Remember before, if we're going to decrease the base, that is one way to decrease the pH. The pH is already too low. So we don't want to decrease the bicarbonate, which is the base. We want to increase the base to offset the excess acid. This summary is going to be utilized in three different ways below. Now I'm going to complete item number one, acid-base chemistry. Indicate the relative concentrations of carbon dioxide, bicarbonate, and a hydrogen cation, and the relative pH. From our summary above, we know that CO2 is abnormal, and the CO2 is too high. So we're going to put a check mark or an X in that box. And the bicarbonate is normal. Uh, the hydrogen cation is too high because there's too much CO2, and the pH is too low. The compensation is going to come from the bicarbonate. So the CO2 is going to remain abnormal. The bicarb is going to increase, as we stated above. And because the bicarb increases, it's going to decrease or neutralize the excess hydrogen cations and increase the pH back to where it needs to be. Number two is a summary using Le Chatelier's principle. 
the abnormal state is too much CO2. Too much CO2 or excess CO2 that is going to drive the reaction in the forward direction. So all we need to do here is put an extra check in that box. And the reason is because we have excess carbon dioxide. The compensation is going to come from an increase in the bicarb. So now if we increase the bicarb, it's going to push the reaction in the reverse direction. So we're going to put a check there, or an X. And the reason why the reaction reverses is because there is an excess or an increase in bicarb. Now let's look at respiratory acidosis in terms of the buffer equation. The normal pH range for human blood is between 7.35 and 7.45. The buffer equation uh, is pH equals pKa plus log of the conjugate base over the weak acid. The pKa in this case is 6.41. We're going to use 10 as the normal relative concentration for bicarb and 1 as the normal relative concentration for CO2. Propose relative concentrations for the abnormal state and the compensation. So we know already that the bicarb is normal. So I'm going to put the number 10 in the numerator. In the denominator, I'm going to choose a number greater than 1. I'll choose 2. And the pH for these values is 7.1 approximately, abnormally too low. So I'm going to write normal for the numerator, which is the bicarb at 10, and then abnormal for the denominator, which is the CO2, too high. Now compensation is where the bicarb is going to increase to offset the excess acid. Okay. So the CO2 is going to remain abnormal. And I'm going to choose a number greater than 10 that will bring it back to the 10 to 1 ratio. So I'm going to put 20 here. And that will equal 7.41. And 7.41 is in the normal range. For the denominator, I'm going to write abnormal again because it needs help. And then for the numerator, I'll write compensating. I'll just compensate. So now let's move on to respiratory alkalosis. So the respiratory system is causing an alkaline or too basic environment. In this case, the pH is too high. And the respiratory system is causing the problem, so that means the metabolic system is normal. The CO2 is too low in this case. So if you think back at what I showed you earlier in the video, one way to increase the pH is to decrease the concentration of the acid and let the existing base stick out like a sore thumb. So if we have concluded that the respiratory system is abnormal, we could ignore that as far as compensating. and the metabolic system needs to back off on the base because if it increases the base, it's going to cause the pH to even go higher. What you're going to realize as you complete this worksheet is if one system increases, the other system that's compensating is going to follow that trend. If the abnormal system is decreasing, then the compensating system is also going to decrease. And it essentially comes down to trying to maintain the ratio between the acid and the base. So the pH could stay within that normal range. So now we'll complete the acid-base table. So the CO2 is abnormal and it's too low. So we're going to put a check here. The bicarb is normal. And if the acid, the CO2, is too low, it's going to cause the hydrogen cation to decrease which causes the pH to increase. The CO2 is going to remain abnormal and the bicarb is going to come to the rescue and compensate. And we've already concluded here it needs to decrease, so we're checking this box. If the bicarb decreases, it's going to allow 
the hydrogen cation concentration to increase to bring the pH back down to normal. Now let's look at respiratory alkalosis in terms of Le Chatelier's principle. We know that there is an insufficient amount of carbon dioxide. An insufficient amount of carbon dioxide is going to drive the reaction backwards or in the reverse direction. The compensation is for the bicarb to back off, to decrease. Well, that will drive the reaction forward. Now we'll look at respiratory alkalosis in terms of the buffer equation, reminding ourselves that normal pH range is 7.35 to 7.45. And we're going to use relative normal concentrations as 10 for bicarb and 1 for CO2. We've concluded already that the carbon dioxide is too low and the bicarb remains normal. In this fraction, I'm going to enter 10 in the numerator because the bicarb is normal and I'm going to choose a number between 0 and 1 for CO2. So I'm going to use 0.5. And the pH is approximately 7.71, which is abnormally too high. So here I'm going to note this is normal. This here is abnormal. And compensation is for the bicarb to decrease. And the CO2 remains abnormal. I need to choose a number less than 10 that will bring back the 10 to 1 ratio between the two components. So the number is going to be 5. And so that will put us right back at 7.41. You now have enough information to complete the subsequent two pages.